Grandma Claudia didn't like me very much. No, she didn't yell at me, didn't hit me, I just felt it. Then my Christmas present is a little worse than the other grandchildren's. Then at a family dinner, I have the smallest piece of cake than the other children. Why was this happening? Probably because I was a foster child in the family. My parents died and my father's cousin, John, grandmother Claudia's son-in-law, took me into his family. My grandmother, like any mother-in-law, did not really like my uncle and consequently me. Or maybe it was because I was too cocky. Even at that time, I was constantly arguing, defending my point of view and expressing everything I think to her face. Grandma didn't like it because girls should be meek and obedient. Grandma lived by the ocean and her daughters often took all their children to her for the summer. Claudia was always happy about our arrival, but I also noticed how difficult it was for her to serve the four of us. Despite my audacity, I began to stay after eating when my stepbrothers and sisters ran to the beach. I helped Claudia clear the table and wash the dishes. Then my responsibilities expanded, sometimes cleaning, sometimes going to the store. At the same time, the other children did not even notice it. Time passed, we grew up, and everyone has their own families, worries, and troubles. We live in different cities, who is further away, who is closer. They began to come to our grandmother rarely. I tried to call as often as possible, but as it turned out later, only I did it. Grandma was getting old and one day her neighbor called me. Claudia fell off the porch and broke her hip. She needed a nurse. I called all my stepbrothers and sisters, but everyone had a good reason to refuse. To waste money on a nurse, too, no one was in a hurry. I was planning a new project that could lead me to a promotion, and I convinced myself that she wasn't my own grandmother, and I also have my own problems like the others. But my husband said that I was unlikely to accomplish the project if all my thoughts were about how Claudia was doing. So I took a vacation from work and went to my grandmother. Claudia's thigh was healing and I helped her and was working on my project to perfection at night. Grandmother died two months later, either sickness or old age. The chores of the funeral fell on me. From our family, none of the grandchildren could come to the funeral. I settled everything, went to Claudia's grave and flew home. The project completely pulled me into work and it helped me to survive the loss. It went on, everything worked out. I was happy, but one day I got a call. A man's voice said, hello, this is a lawyer's office about a will, and he called my grandmother's name. I didn't want to fly to her again. The project was in full swing and to waste time on a flight for the sake of some trinket. But then I decided that I wanted to get something in memory of my beloved grandmother. I got to the law office and what was my surprise when I saw that all the grandmother's grandchildren were there and then the will was read to us. Everyone looked at me with open mouths, Claudia's unloved granddaughter. The lawyers said that my grandmother bequeathed the house to me. It was so unexpected that I couldn't hold back the tears. That's how grandma thanked her unloved granddaughter for her kindness. Good has no expiration date. Good always remains good. And if at some point in your life you gave a piece of it to your neighbor, then in the near future it will return to you with interest.